Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Polina and here on my channel it is all about fragrances. In today's video I'm going to be talking about my next perfume rotation for the next weeks in April and in May. The weather is changing, the mood is changing, my previous rotation was just excellent. Well, I just want to give it a try to other perfumes, to new perfumes and that's why I would like to share with you my next seven perfumes in the next perfume rotation. I'm going to start with the perfume, with the fragrance. You're all familiar with this. It's uh, Idol Intense by Lancome. It was created in um, 2020. The notes are slightly different to the original one. I have it in the small bottle. As the name says, Intense. This is a more intense version. It's like this original version was intensified by 100%. The notes listed here are bitter orange, mandarin in the top notes, in the middle notes, two types of rose and two types of jasmine. And in the base, woody notes, patchouli, vanilla, cedar and sandalwood. The woody touch is predominant here. As I said, I don't see a huge difference between the original and the flanker. They have the same similar direction, they have their nuances. Wearing this I feel so happy and so carefree. It's just, it's the fragrance of good mood, happiness, of bright sunny days. The projection and the longevity are amazing of Idol Intense. The woody touch comparing to the original one is more predominant giving to this fragrance kind of um, a serious touch. And this one is very romantic, feminine. And this one compared to the original is more serious, is more office appropriated. I love it and if you are familiar with this one, please share your thoughts about Idol Intense, which version you prefer more. I think last year was uh, the release of Aura, uh, the second flanker of original Idol. So um, love it and I'm going to wear it in the next weeks. The next fragrance I would like to talk about and I'm going to wear during the next weeks is Miss Dior in the version of Eau de Toilette. This one was created in uh, 2013 by Françoise Dimashi, the in-house perfumer of the house Dior. The notes are slightly different to the Eau de Parfum version. There are many of the parfum versions. Um, this one is uh, slightly different. In the opening is um, red, orange. In the middle, rose and neroli. And in the base, patchouli. In my opinion, it has a very predominant patchouli touch. And the opening is more, has more of citrus fruits. It is very feminine, but also with a bitchy undertone going on, if you know what I mean, because of the predominant patchouli note. I think it's it's the one of the best choices for the office, for the work, and I'm going to wear it um, during my office hours. It's not suffocating, it's not over the top, whereas this one, if you spray too much, it can be overwhelming. You have to be very careful with this one, wearing it in the office. This one, because of the, or the toilet version, it's not so intense. And it, it's more, comparing to the other parfum version, it's more spring, like spring appropriate. It is lighter, it is not so intense. But nonetheless, um, I'm quite happy with the longevity and the projection of or the toilet version. As I said, slightly different, not so um, creamy, not so thick, a little bit lighter. Or the toilet of Miss Dior. 
Another fragrance that I'm going to wear during the next weeks. Uh, in some previous videos I already talked about this one. This one is Signorina Eleganza by Salvadore Ferragamo, Fashion Italian House. This one was created in 2014, is the flanker of the famous Signorina. The notes are slightly different in the top notes, grapefruit and the pear. In the middle, asmantus and almond and in the base, patchouli and leather, although I think it's more suede than leather. If I'm honest, I can't really detect a particular floral note here. I think this is a mixture, a blend of different fruity floral notes, although because of the pear it goes in a sweet direction, it's not overwhelming, it's not over the top, it's just the right amount of the sweetness. And because of this prominent patchouli and suede note, it is a perfect balance. So it is balanced between fruity florals and suede. Also the asmantus, asmantus can give this apricot suede velvety touch. It, in this combination it is just a perfect balance, perfect mixture between femininity and sweetness and kind of uh, being serious. I think this one, because of the patchouli and suede note, it is also very much office um, appropriated. I'm going to wear it during my office hours. The projection and longevity are also very nice. You're going to notice this fragrance on you. I can't really detect any almondiness here. It's not a typical nutty touch here. Maybe it's just a slightly creamy undertone going on. This fragrance, well, I think the name um, suits to the fragrance Signorina Eleganza, Elegant Lady, because of the smantas and suede and patchouli. This fragrance is going to be very suitable for an elegant lady. It's going to underline the whole um, image of the business lady. And because I already told you, I prefer fragrances in combination with body lotion. And I have many different creams, body creams and body lotions and luckily this one goes in combination with Signorina Eleganza body lotion. I like wearing them, I like applying them because it intensifies the um, projection of the fragrance and longevity is also more long-lasting because of the use of the body lotion. The next fragrance I would like to talk about is one of my favorite for the spring. This is the release of, I think, 2020 uh, Irresistible Givenchy in the version of Eau de Parfum. There is also Eau de Toilette and Eau Fraiche uh, versions. In my opinion, they all go in similar direction. They have the nuances and differences. If I have, if I get my hands on the a, a fresh version. I'm going to make a video about the differences. This one is Eau de Parfum version. So what are the notes listed here? Pear and abretta in the middle, rose and iris and in the base musk and cedar. Very sexy and girly fragrance. Fragrance of happy mood, of sunny days, spring, I think this one is man killer, so I think it's very appropriate for a date. It's so it has some animalic touch, but it's not over the top. It's not overwhelming. It, I think it's a perfect balance between fruity florals and this animalic touch. It is playful, delightful, bright, happy, and um, you know just feeling like you are 16 again, everything is going to be all right, everything is still ahead of you. 
I love this perfume. It's uh, just a, um, you know, girly, happy, sexy fragrance. The next fragrance is quite different to the previous ones. This is German brand Gilles Sander Simply Poudre. I'm sure you're familiar with this one. It's a uh, cheapy from a dark drugstore, but I think in my opinion, the smell of this fragrance is much more expensive than its price. It was created in 2018. The notes are very interesting here. In the top, sunny notes. Well, what can be better for spring than the sunny notes? Frisia, Mandarin in the middle. Rice. Look, this is, it has this powdery, the, the essence is slightly powdery, it's not clear. Rice, heliotrope, well, poudre, powdery scent, and heliotrope is often used in powdery fragrances, musk and vanilla, and in the base, cashmere and tonka beans. Tonka beans are often used in powdery scents. As the name suggests, it is a powdery fragrance, but it's not over the top, it's not overwhelming, it's not straight into your nose, it's not this typical dry powder, it has the sense of the second skin. Wearing this fragrance you just feel cozy and comfortable. It's, it's a fragrance where you don't have to be uh, serious, you just can relax, you can trust, you can be yourself, you can feel comfy and protected. I'm going to wear this in the office actually, but uh, I don't have to be always on guard in office, maybe some Friday I'm going to use this one just to relax and, you know, um, wait for the, for the um, weekend to come for the relaxation, for um, being calm and comfortable and cozy. Although it's, it's a cheapie, the longevity and pro pro projection are quite nice, so I think this is a much more expensive um, um, smell than its price. So, love it and I'm going to wear it in the next uh, couple of weeks. The next frag two fragrances are quite new. Recently I did the unboxing video in Russian. This is Mont Blanc Lady Emblem Le. This is the fragrance dedicated to magnolia because in Germany where I live magnolia trees are blooming and I had the chance finally to detect, to smell uh, the magnolia tree because in the last years I was trying to detect some smell and I couldn't smell anything and this this time I was lucky and it was just um, so sensual, overwhelming, sensual, um, sweet, indolic smell. I was overwhelmed by magnolia tree and I wanted to I, I wanted to capture it in the in the bottle, so this fragrance is dedicated to magnolia, and I think it's the perfect it's the perfect um, combination of of floral notes to represent the smell of magnolia, sweet, creamy, sweet but not overwhelming, not over the top, not like the flower, very sensual. Um, this one has a special creamy touch. I can't say that this fragrance is one of my favorite directions, but um, I'm going to wear it, I'm going to try it. Look at the bottle. It's just amazing. It's, it is like a, like a bright crystal. Actually, this one is also a cheapie, it's not expensive at all, but the bottle itself is just amazing. Very heavy um, cap. I think it's glass. It's not, it's not, it, it doesn't look cheap at all. It looks fantastic. Look at it. Bright and like a, like a crystal, like a diamond. 
The smell is mm, sweet, floral and very sensual, very sexy in a creamy direction, like body cream, some, some creamy texture. Give it a try if you like it. Uh, please um, let me know what do you think about Mont Blanc Lady Emblem Le. And the last fragrance I would like to talk about, I already talked about this one. This is Le Rouge by the French niche house de Torrent. It's the flanker of the original Le Gold. The notes listed here are red rose, asmantus, peach, jasmine, powdery notes, musk, patchouli and amber. It has a very bitter opening. The opening is strange. This fragrance is is something different. It's not a, it's not it's not a usual a typical fragrance. In my opinion, the opening is quite bitter and sour. If I smelled that in the shop, I wouldn't I probably wouldn't buy it, but because it was a blind buy, I have I have to give it a go. I have to give it a try. But the advantage of this fragrance is that it develops on your skin, it works on your skin, it's not linear. The opening is quite sour and, and bitter and then, and then it becomes more floral. It has some touch of asmantus, this peachy, apricot velvety touch combined with some bitterness. It's quite strange. It's, it's, it's um, not so easy to get used to it, but I give it a go. I try it on my skin. Um, well, it's not a huge bottle, so mm. I give it a go. If, you, if you're familiar with this one, please share with me your opinion about this one. What is the best weather or best season in your opinion to wear this fragrance? The longevity and projection are average, not bad, quite, quite nice, quite nice. So these were seven fragrances that I'm going to wear in the next weeks for coming spring, sunny days. I hope this video was interesting for you. Maybe you have some new ideas about spring fragrances. Please share with me what spring fragrances you are going to wear in the next weeks. Yeah, thank you very much for watching this video and see you soon in the next one. Bye bye!